In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to, how to create these plastics. These are not just plain plastics, they have various textures and various details going on there. Um, but you're going to learn a couple of cool tricks. We're going to cover some details in this one on to do with V-Ray Fog and using that in a refraction slot. Uh, we're going to put some lovely textures in here to get this color. And you'll also be using a V-Ray Triplanar texture. So we're going to go over various tips here, various tricks in order to get these looking right and looking good in very short time. So to start with, we're going to open the material editor by clicking up here. And on your materials, just make sure V-Ray is open. Double click on V-Ray material, select that. Select the item we're going to assign it to, in this case it's this chair. And just assign it. That will assign it and you'll see these little white lines here showing that it's now on the item which has been selected. Now you can't see it says selected, so if I press F4, you can see it's selected. All right, so we're gonna create a red chair. We're just gonna get a red red plastic. Just a little bit dark, a little bit very red. I think that'll work out nicely. I'm gonna click on these two buttons, show shaded material in viewport and show background in preview, just so you can see what's going on. And then we're gonna take this reflection. We're just gonna bump this up and you can see how clear the reflections are there, so we're going to just bring down the glossiness, try point 8. And that looks pretty nice. And if I open up, this is the V-Ray buffer, if I just double click here. If I do a region, just over this chair, let's just see how that's come out. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we're just going to, I'm going to make this slightly more reflective here, let's try point, you can go up to point 9. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a couple of maps and get just a few extra details there. These are some nice maps here, which I created with uh, in a tutorial on creating dirt maps just the other day. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this into the reflection map. And you can see this changes. If I open the preview window, you get a good idea of what's going on there. So that's with that in there, you've got a lot of extra detail coming on. And in reflection glossiness, I'm going to put this one and you can see how blurry that's making it and how sharp it's making it. Now, in both of these cases, um, it's going to be too much. So we're going to bring this down and dial this right down. If I make it so you can see this map by clicking there, you'll be able to see if, if I press F4 here, you'll be able to see if it's mapped correctly. I like going in this top view, all W, T, P, perspective, Z, zoom, press F3. This is a glitch. In this version of Max, go to Facets and you'll have it there. If that map isn't there, which I was kind of expecting it not to be, you can select and just over here, just go into the UV and just go down to UVW map. And then you can just select box and that's right there. That's now assigned. So with that off and on. So I'm going to leave it off. I think the mapping there is fine as it is. And I like the way it's coming down around the edges here. So, you know, but like I say, if you don't, if you don't fancy that, you can always add a UV map. And if you add your UV map, you might have to pay attention over here as well, if you've got box or, or real world scale. So just pay attention. If you can't see it in box and adjusting these, then try that. Maybe your maps come in real world scale. Maybe someone said it real world scale, so. That's that. Okay, so we've got this, we've got these maps in there. And if I render this out now, I press F9, you can see what I mean about it being too much. There's just way too much detail. And we can go through and test this and test it and test it, but I know from experience that what we need here is we really need this really low at about two, and this really low as well at two or three. Three might be too much, but you can see that if you look right here, you see that detail? That's what we're talking about. That's what's being added. And a good idea to get more detail is if you double click here and the blur on all maps when you bring them in comes in at one. We'll drop it down to 0.2. And we'll do the same with this one. And that is a nice red plastic. If I look at this now, and I think I tell the guys continually in the office that photorealism isn't about 
creating the maps completely photorealistic. It's about adding in detail. It's about getting things right so people believe it's photorealistic. And that will add a tiny bit of extra detail there, which is perceptible to the human eye, but you know, it's not so obvious. So that's a red plastic, a gorgeous red plastic over there. Now we're going to put a yellow plastic on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to open the material editor and you know, just double click on the V-Ray material, open this up again, just so you can see it better. Double click on this one. And we're going to take this diffuse and we're going to make this yellow. And we want it kind of orangey yellow. I want it very saturated, very bright. Bring this up there. There you go. So we'll do that actually. I think maybe just bring it just a touch down here. Okay, that'll do. Click on these. And again, we're going to take the reflection and we're going to bump this. And the glossiness, we're going to put this at 0.95. And we're going to bump up this reflection further. And I'm actually going to take this Fresnel and I'm going to unlock this because I want this to be more reflective. And I mean, I could bring that all the way up, but instead what I'm going to do is come here and just raise this up. And you can see it becoming more reflective as I go up higher and higher. And I'm going to go to about there. And I think that'll be great. And if we open this up, you can see what we've created. Oops, <laughs> I'd better assign it. So select and click on this little button here to assign it. And you can see what we've created there. It's a nice glossy plastic. Now, in this case, what I want is I want extra detail. Sometimes when you get plastics, you end up with just a very, very fine bump, fine, fine detail. So we're going to add that in. And all we need is we need maps general and we need a noise map. So we're going to take this and put that straight into bump. Now, actually, before we put it in bump, what we'll do is we'll put it into diffuse. And the reason I've done that is because with noise maps, you know, there's various factors which affect the size of this noise. For example, if the chair has been scaled, that'll affect it. If the chair was built in meters or inches and you've brought it into a scene which is in millimeters, it's going to be a different scale. Um, and there's other factors too. So you, you, based on this, you don't know what size this is. I mean, if you, if you click on this and you say, okay, show it in viewport. So we've got it set at 635. If we press F9, just to render that out and see what size that is, we can't see any noise there. And that's why we can see it in the viewport either. But basically, the reason for this is it's just too high. If we drop this down to 10, you can start seeing it here coming on in the viewport. I mean, you won't see it in the viewport if it's too big or too small. You know, if I drop this down to 0.1, it's going to be so small, you also don't see it. 10, you can see here, but you don't actually know what size that is. So you have to render it. Press escape because that was still highlighted. Press F9. And you can render it, and now you can see what the size is. So that's too big. And what I think we're going to need is I think we're going to need a size 1. Press escape again. Press F9. And you've got a lot of detail going on there. So if we take that and put that in a bump, and then take the bump and set the bump at 10. Come down to maps. 10. And now what we're looking at, that should be nice. Let's make this 5K. And let's render that region. So you can see with this, all of this detail coming in here, this is exactly what I wanted. So we get all this beautiful bump detail coming in here in the plastic. And so that's the second plastic. Now I'm just going to reload this one in. And we can do this chair here next. I better change this back. So this is the reference image. And I want to create this sort of texture. And it's not that hard to create this. So what we're going to do is I've got some maps here. And basically, I went to this website. This is wildtextures.com. And here they've got some nice leathers. And I came along and I looked at this. And I decided that this would be great to get all this detail going on here. 
So, and you know, I know this has fiber armchair and it's not actually plastic, but some plastics have this, this quality. And what we'll do is we're going to create that. So what I did is I took this image into Photoshop. I pressed Control J to make a copy of it. And then I came along here and I went filter, uh, blur, sorry, filter blur, Gaussian blur. And I basically started at one and I just gradually moved this up until the leather detail disappeared. And that was at six. So here I've got the detail I wanted, but the leather detail is gone. And then what I did is knowing this, I was like, okay, I need to create a black and white image for the reflection and reflection glossiness. So I went back to the original image and I put on a black and white mask. You know, you just come up here. I mean, adjust black and white adjustment layer, clicked here on black and white. And then I put an exposure on and I just played around with this exposure levels until it came out like this. So these are the exposure levels I ended up with. Gamma does makes that brighter and just makes the darks darker. And the exposure, just adjust that. And so I get a lot of contrast going on here. And then having that, what I did is shift, control, alt, E to make a copy. And then I came along here and again, I did falter, filter, sorry, blur, Gaussian blur. And again, I went through this and tried this and I just moved this until I got the detail that I needed. And then I clicked okay. Actually, I put a curves on. So the curves look like this. This makes the darks darker and the lights lighter. So that was my curves and that just added in that extra bit of contrast and then I saved that out. What we're going to do is we're going to take this, select that chair, come here to material V-Ray, double click on that, bring that over and assign it. Oop. And then what we're going to do is take this and just grab that bitmap and drag it in, drop it in and put that straight into the diffuse slot. Now again here, you can click here on show shading material and viewport show background in preview. And do Alt Q, Alt W here. Just go into this viewport, press Z, take a look. Press M to bring up the material editor. We need to be able to see this. Okay, we cannot see it there. And that's because of the UV map it had on it. So like I say, just make sure, see if it needs a UV map or not. If it does, you can just press U, come down here to UVW map. This is right here in the modify tab. And then make that box and see if you want it real world scale or not. And if I turn that off, I'm gonna leave it on because if you see here, in the middle, it's exactly, on each side, it's exactly the same. It's been symmetried. So that handles that. And then what we want to do is we want to add in some more details. So to add in more details, much like we did with the red over there, okay, we've got this teal plastic reflection. So grab the map, put it here, and then what we're going to do is just come in here and just go into this reflection and get that somewhere where you want it, and go to the glossiness, try 0.5. And that's pretty close to the, the reflection and reflective glossiness of this one. And then we're going to just put this into the reflection, and this is the reflective glossiness amount. And then what we're going to do is come along here, click on the maps, and let's download, and let's change these. Now on this, we want this to be, say, 20, and let's try 20 on that. And so we still have that detail, but just not complete throughout the whole thing. And come out of isolation mode just by clicking this button. And then click over here, last Fury frame buffer, that's selected. And let's render, see how that comes out. Again, we can't see that very well. I'm just going to save this over here. What we will do, I want to see some more details coming in there. So what we'll do is we'll go press M for the material editor. And let's adjust these. Let's try 30 and 30. and bring up your, the render settings. And you can either lower the noise threshold to see more detail, or you can just raise this up. So let's try this at 
Okay, I'm gonna click render. Okay, now personally I would say there's two problems with this. First of all, we got a seam along here and a seam up there. And we seem to have a seam up along here as well. So we need to be handling those. And then the other one I would say is it's not really, it needs to be slightly shinier just to get a bit more detail. Like this is a little bit more reflection going on there. So we're gonna take this and this reflection is gonna get bumped up here. And this glossiness is gonna come up to 0.6. And the way we handle those seams we can use a V-Ray triplanar texture. So the first thing to know is V-Ray triplanar texture really loves working in real world scale. So let's stick on real world scale on this and let's go into the material editor, double click this, click on real world scale here. And if you look at this, I'm going to guess and I'm going to say about 500 by 350. So 500 by 350, and we're going to do the same on this one, real world, 500, 350. And then what we're going to do is just come here to the maps and go V-Ray, V-Ray triplanar texture right there, plug that in there, texture. And you can just leave all these settings as they are for now, that's going to blend it by 0.1. If you want to increase the blend amount, you just increase this up, I think it goes all the way up to 1. And then for here, we're going to do the same, but I want it in both of these. So instead, I'm going to click here. I'm going to say change material map type. And I'm going to say V-Ray triplanar texture here in this map type. Keep old map as submap. And that's it. Now that's there. So this is really used just for those edges. That's exactly what it was created for. And just click F9. Okay, so you've got all that detail now. And more importantly, you can see more detail coming in here. More importantly, all of those seams have been handled. And that's how you use triplanar texture. That's just awesome. Okay, let's go back to this one. Let's put this back to the same resolution. And next, we're going to do this chair on the end. Now, for this, we're going to do a see-through plastic. And this really is very simple when you get used to it. We're just going to click V-Ray, V-Ray material. Make sure we have it selected and get this assigned and then what we're going to do is take this and all we have to do is get this refraction make this completely white uh, click on these two so you can see get the reflection boost this up to something you think is needed for plastics drop the glossiness down to something suitable we'll leave it at 0.9 keep it nice and glossy what we're going to do is we're going to just play with the fog color so let's make this dark, something like that. Actually, we can make it darker, like that. And then this fog multiplier often needs to be dropped down. So we can try 0.5 and click render. I think that's a bit too see-through. So just bring up the material editor. So we'll, let's try this fog multiplier at 1. Just make it a bit darker, a bit thicker. And that's looking nice. And the fog here is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. In the thick peats, in the thick places it's darker, in the thin places it's lighter. But often, often a V-Ray fog set at one will become too thick, so you'll often be reducing that down. But in this case, it's working beautiful. Great, fantastic. There we have our array of plastics. I'm liking it. So we'll get that rendered out for you. And that's how you create plastics for 3ds Max and V-Ray.